Hello. Mr. Rico? Yes, operator, this is Mr. Rico. Miami calling. Miami? I'll take it. Mr. Rico? Speaking. Mr. Eddie Rico? Yes. Who is this, please? It's Phil. Oh, Phil. Phil, how are you? So you remember old friends, huh? Well, that's good. <laughs> it's practically the middle of the night. What's on your mind? Eddie boy, we're sending you a guy. Put him to work in your place, in the back room, way in back. Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, they never sent me anybody before. Why now? Eddie boy, I'm only delivering a message. Yeah, but why me? I don't know the answers. You'll probably hear from Cubic today. He'll be in Miami. Stay where we can reach you and see that the boy we're sending does the same. Sure, Phil. But it's just that I... Phil! Alice, it's late. Go back to sleep. Pity that call. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry I woke you up, darling. What did Phil want? Well, it's nothing important. Just a little favor. Well, there's important, nothing important favors, Eddie. What do they want with you? Well, darling, I told you it was nothing important. Don't make something out of nothing. I'm through with them, and you know it. And Sid Kubik knows it. He's never gone back on his word to me or to any of the Ricos. We're like his family. And you, Eddie? Who's your family? Me, I said cubic and them. What kind of a crack is that? Can you live with a man 10 years and not know what you are? To? I know what I am to you. I'm your wife. Twice almost the mother of your children. Oh, darling, now don't punish yourself. Do you yourself. think the orphanage will let Mr. and Mrs. Rico adopt a baby? Well, of course they will. They've checked us. We're okay. Okay until the phone rings. Oh, Eddie, I'm scared. <laughs> darling, darling, there's nothing to be scared of. Nothing's gonna happen, I swear to you. Nothing's gonna happen. Come on. Can you believe that? I believe you. <laughs> That's my girl. I'll go back to sleep. Uh, you're going back to sleep. I didn't get married to sleep alone. Oh. What did you get married for? I was a girl. Hmm. I wanted to be a woman. Did you make it? Sometimes I'm not sure. It was all so long ago. Well, maybe I can help you, I remember. See, did it start like this? Let's fall in love. Why shouldn't we fall in love? Morning. The second time this morning. Drink your vitamins. Now, do you think I need vitamins? Look. Oh, come on, I can't hold it. Drink your vitamins. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? Mm. Just one, just a tiny one. One. Hey, what kind of books you've been reading lately? Huh? Time you were reading your mail. Oh, anything from the orphanage? No, it's not there. Uh, they promised us a baby weeks ago. You can't rush them. Uh, I hope they're not stalling us. Oh, honey, we're hoping too hard. We make our disappointment so much worse. Look, we're going to get a baby, and it's going to be a boy. You always sound like you turned down a baby girl. She's like a bug in my ear about boys. You're like every father. You want to have a son? Well, I guess I want to give him the things my father couldn't give me. Crazy? Crazy. <laughs> but after we adopt a boy, mm -hmm. I still want to get a girl. I got a girl. You. 
I got a letter from another girl, your mother. Oh. Want me to read it? Yeah. Want to hear about who died, who had twins, who got married? And what the latest doctor said about her leg? What's the matter, something wrong with her leg? Oh, no, no, it's, it's fine. She's got a new doctor, a man with two golden hands. Uh. Listen to this. Eddie, have you heard from the boys? Gino came by last Friday to say goodbye. He only said he was going far away for a long time. It made me very sad. Why he don't tell his mother where he's going, I don't know, but mostly I worry about Johnny. After all, he is my baby, and I can't sleep sometimes wondering why he had to go away, too. And I ain't heard one little word from him in such a long time. Eddie, I'm afraid. And it is worse because I don't know what I'm afraid of. Eddie, that call last night. Oh. Your mother's letter and both your brothers disappearing. Is there any connection? No. What are you so worried about? Because the phone rings and suddenly, like your mother, I'm afraid. And I don't know what I'm afraid of. Darling, you sound like a superstitious peasant from the old country. Phil called me to give one of the boys a job, that's all. And that's all the call was about. Capiche? Yes, I am a peasant from the old country. Want to beat me? Tonight, and that's a promise. <laughs> now, how about that shower? Hey, peasant, no soap in here. Yes, master. Hey, let go of me, my robe. You got me all wet. I'm rich, I'll buy you a new one. You are crazy. You got ideas like this. Out of my head. You certainly are. Now. Now, quiet, peasant. You're the one that gave me the vitamins. Let me Come on. go! <laughs> Hello, pal. Good morning, Mr. Regal. A little late, aren't you? I guess I am. How's the family? The wife's just about getting on her feet again. <laughs> that new kid of mine could keep this laundry busy all alone. Well, I'll give him all the diapers he needs. On the house. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Rico. Good morning, Nancy. Any calls? No, sir. Oh, Mr. Rico, there's someone waiting for you. I asked him to wait out here, but he insisted upon going in. Get away from that desk. Rico? Mr. Rico. Get away from that desk. I'm Mr. Wesson. Mr. Joe Wesson. Who sent you? You know. Answer me. Phil. When did you see him? Yesterday. He said for me to report to you here. Hold up. What's your trouble? They told me not to say nothing. They didn't mean me. Phil said nobody. How hot are you? Angelo? Yes, sir. I'm sending you a new man. Put him to work in the boiler room. Yes, Mr. Rico? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you, but Mr. Landers at the Flamingo said it was urgent. Thank you. Wow, real tasty. She types, too. Put in the good word, pal. You know, honored guest, lots of dictation, nights. Look, just get those ideas out of your head. You report to Angelo in the boiler room. And if you got another suit, don't bother to unpack. It's going to be a short visit. Beat it. Nancy? 
Nancy, I'm going over to the Flamingo. Yes, sir. Stay there. All right, let's go. What's this all about? Something wrong? Gina, what are you doing down here? Eddie, did you hear anything about our kid brother? No, but I got a letter from Mama this morning. She's worried about you and Johnny. It's better that Mama don't know where I am. They sent me to St. Louis. So what are you doing here in Florida? I came to ask my brother for help. Sure, anything you want, Gina. I've got to get to Cuba, South America, any place where I can get lost. You sound like you're in big trouble. I am. You heard about the Carmina killing? Yeah? I was the gun on the job. What? Gino. Gino, I, I, I just can't believe it. You were a killer. You were a collector for the bookies. I was, but I graduated into the bigger money. But I always told you I wanted you and Johnny in business with me. It's too late what you told me. Or Johnny. He was the driver on the job. Johnny was the driver? Gino. Gino. Paul. Oh. Does... Does Mama know? Yeah, she suspects something. Look, Eddie. Eddie, I've got to move fast. Tell me how, when, where. Just give me a chance to think. Well, just think about this. After the killing, everything was quiet. The police didn't have a single lead. Then all of a sudden, Johnny disappears. All right, so Johnny disappeared, but, but you stayed on and nothing happened. So what's all the South America talk about? A few weeks ago, there's a big rumble all over town. The DA, a special grand jury. All of a sudden, everybody starts asking me, where's your brother Johnny? Where's Johnny? So I played honest with everybody. I tell them I don't know where Johnny is. Then for no reason at all, the organization sends me to St. Louis. Why, Eddie? Why me? Sure, I was in on the Carmini job. Then they brought in a new gun from Kansas City, a guy named Joe Wesson. Wesson? Yeah, yeah, now get this. Wesson's disappeared, too. Eddie, I, I, I've got a creepy feeling they've got the big eye on me. Oh, that's crazy. The organization has always had good sense behind their operation. Look, Gino, go to St. Louis like they told you. Yeah, sure, sure. I go to St. Louis and nobody hears of me again. Oh, Gino, how could you be so stupid? All right, so I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Look, the point is, what do I do now? Eddie, Eddie, but I'm scared. All right, okay, Gino. There's nothing to be scared of. Nothing's gonna happen. Sid Kubik will take care of everything. Oh, Kubik. I don't trust him anymore. What are you talking about? That's like saying you don't trust your own father. The way things are happening, I just don't feel right about him. Feelings like that are for old women. 
Gino. Gino, did I ever steer you wrong? No. All right. Now, here, take this. Go to St. Louis like they told you. Wait till things cool down a bit, and I'll try to work something out. Come on. Snap out of it, huh? See Mama, give her an extra big kiss for me, will you? Don't worry, I'll write and tell her you're doing fine. And don't forget, take care of yourself and behave. I'll try. Don't try, just do it. Okay, Eddie. Yes, I know. Yes, I'm aware of that. Mr. Rico? Oh, hold the line a second. Mr. Rico just stepped into the office. It's Miami, the second time they've called. Hmm. I'll take it to my office. Just one moment, please. Hello. Where you been? I tried to reach you at the Flamingo. You never got there. Ah, the laundry has lots of customers. I never made it. The boss is here, Eddie. He wants you to get on the 130 plane and come right over. Uh, did the boy get there? Yeah, I put him to work. OK, get on the plane. Phil, now, let, let me get something straight. Phil. Your wife tried to reach you. Shall I try to get it for you? Uh, never mind. I'm on my way home. Honey, I've got to see Cubic. Now, come on. Snap out of it. The orphanage called and said we can get our baby today. And you're going to Miami. What we both wanted so much. Or maybe you didn't really want it after all. Now, how can you say that? Of course I do. The agency said that we both have to appear to sign the adoption papers. We can't get the baby because you're going away. We will get the baby. I'll be back as soon as I can. And you just tell them that I have Tell to them go. what? Tell them, yes, Mr. Rico wants to adopt a child, but it's a little inconvenient at the moment. Oh, go ahead. You have to catch a plane. Darling, if I can explain it to explain? you. Explain? That they can't keep their word? I thought that after three years, we were finally rid of them. Ready? What do they want from you? Why don't you talk to Cubic? He's our friend. He'd understand. Well, darling, I didn't have a chance to talk to Cubic. I only spoke to Phil. If Cubic knew about the baby... Eddie, please, please don't go. Darling, I have to. Now, come on. Oh, that's the cab. Look, everything's going to be fine. I'll be back in no time. I just get so frightened thinking that maybe the orphanage will change their mind. Look, darling, nothing's going to go wrong. Now, come on, give me a hug and a kiss and push me out of the house. Come on. Leave it there, Chief. It isn't the laundry man himself. Hello, Phil. Eddie! <laughs> Eddie, this is a pleasure. Hello, Sid. You're looking fine. Three years, and now it's Sid. What happened to Uncle Sid? Well, that's what I've been asking myself. Ever since I got that call this morning at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? What call? 
from your friend here telling me to hide out a character named Wesson. Wesson? Yeah. You remember Mr. Kubik, that fellow from KC. You sent him to Eddie? On whose orders? Well, I'll talk to you later. Leave us alone. I'm ashamed, Eddie, to send you a man like that. You, of all people. Oh, that's all right, Sid. I know it's a slap in the face. I'll get him out of there. <laughs> How's your uh, laundry business? Oh, going stronger every day. <laughs> I knew you'd be successful. Times have sure changed, haven't they? Just think, when you used to work with us, you did the job all alone. Today, it takes four accountants. <laughs> How about some coffee? Sure. You know, Eddie, you're as close as I'll ever come to having a son. Thanks, Sid. How do you think it'll feel to be a grandfather? Hey, <laughs> you and Alice? Yeah, we're adopting a baby. Ah, this is news. <laughs> I'm a happy man, and Mama, she must be dancing and singing. Uh, she doesn't know yet. You see, it, we didn't know ourselves until this morning. That's why I've got to get back as quickly as possible. You see, Sid, I don't want anything to interfere with my raising a family. You know me. I believe in families, especially the Ricos. You ever do any fishing, Eddie? No. I've got some scheduled for today. Come on and talk to me while I get dressed. Sure. I hope you don't have any trouble adopting the baby. Oh, I think everything will be all right. What did you want to see me about, Sid? How's your brother doing? Who, uh, Gino? No, no, Johnny, the kid. Heard anything from him lately? No, I haven't. How's Mama? He's fine. I just got a letter from her. Mm, that's what I like to hear. The family should stick together. Everything I've got, what I am, I owe to her because of what she did for me. My name is Cubic. But in here, I'm a Rico. Especially when it comes to Mama. Such a woman. I might as well say it right out. I worship her. Has she heard anything from Johnny? No, I don't think she has. Oh, he ought to be ashamed of himself. That's not nice. She always worries when she doesn't hear from her boys. <laughs> what a mother. The kind they write songs about. Did she say anything about Johnny being married? No. Is he? Well, that's the word we got. Well, that's a surprise to me. What do you hear from Gino? Oh, Mom wrote that he'd be, uh, that he was sent away. You see, uh, we don't know where Johnny is. And that's not good. I hoped he got in touch with you. He should. Your brothers. Well, I haven't heard from him in two years. Well, I thought maybe somebody he'd written to you. It's too bad he he didn't. Nobody's heard from him for too long a time. Hello? Yes. Not before half an hour. I'm in conference. The name of the girl Johnny married is Nora Malix. Johnny met her in New York last summer. She has a brother. His name is Peter Malix. Works in New York. Lives in a small apartment out on Long Island. All he ever does at night is study. Wants to get ahead. You know the type. I, uh, I don't suppose you've ever met him. Well, how could I? I didn't know Johnny was married, so how could I have met Malik's or his sister? Well, we have a kind of pipeline to the DA's office. And we know that this Malik's person's been visiting the DA. And once, an assistant DA himself went to see Malik's at his own apartment. Now, Eddie, I don't have to draw you any pictures, but all this is happening at a very bad time. You know about Carmini being killed, don't you? I read about it. On that job, Johnny was the driver. 
Our connection at the DA's tells us that Malix is asking the DA that if a witness could be produced who would turn state's evidence, would they give that witness a break? Now, I can't imagine Johnny's wife making him talk. She never could. That job was very important to lots of our friends, Eddie. And in light of all this... And Johnny would never talk. Of course not. You and I, we know it. But our friends, they don't know it. For their peace of mind, they like to have everybody present and accounted for. Otherwise, they get nervous. Eddie, somebody's got to find him fast. And you're the only one who can do it. Oh, Sid, I told you before, Alice is waiting for me. This is such a bad time. Do you want to tell me your brother's life isn't important? To you, to Mama, to me? Eddie, I know this isn't an easy thing you have to do. But I've stalled our friends as long as I could. Now they're ready to jump the gun. The only thing to make them hold still is for me to tell them that you're going after Johnny. Well, suppose I find him. What happens then? Simple. Get him to leave the country. Wherever he goes, we'll make him and his wife comfortable. But you've got to work faster than fast. Suppose I don't find him. Eddie, you've got to. For Johnny's sake. <laughs> that, you know, that wife of his must be off her rocker to talk him into crazy ideas like that. I'm not worried about Johnny. But maybe she's giving him religion. You've got to find him and put some sense into his head. Remind him he can't hide away forever. He'll listen to you and leave the country. It's the only intelligent thing to be done. That way, nobody gets hurt. Agree? Oh. Where do I start looking? That I leave to you. I've got one suggestion. Why not start with the girl's brother? He might give us a lead as to where they are. Here's 10,000 to see that Johnny and his bride get away in luxury. Here's the dope on Malik's, where he lives, works, eats, etc., etc. Here's your plane ticket for New York. You leave Miami in 20 minutes. You and me. We know the family comes first. But work fast. I want to help Johnny. I know you do, too. Good luck. Goodbye, Sid. And God bless you. Hello. Hello, Alice. How are you, darling? Where are you? At the airport in Miami. Eddie, how soon will you get here? The orphanage called again. Alice, I've got to go to New York. What? New York? Cubic wants me to go. Why, Eddie? Because there was something about that phone call this morning? But, but darling, you see, I have to. My brother Johnny's in trouble. I don't care about your brother Johnny. I only care about our baby. And if you go away, if you get mixed up with them again, we'll lose him. And I don't think you and I can ever. Look, darling, please, Alice, listen to me. I'll get home as fast as I can, I promise you. But tell them anything, tell them anything you want, as long as they hold the baby. American Airlines, flight 24, departing from Gay Park immediately. Alice, my plane is leaving. I, I have to go now. I love you.
Ashdale. Hi. May I? No. Will it be? Coffee. I don't know yet, honey. Yes? You're Peter Malik's. That's right. Sorry, I don't seem to remember you. I'm Eddie Rico, Johnny's brother. What do you want? I'd like to know where he is. I don't know where he is. I've got to get in touch with him. Why do you bother me? Look, don't play games, Malix. Johnny's in trouble, and so is your sister. I don't know where they are. Well, what'll it be? Nothing, honey. No, no, wait a minute. I don't know where they are. You're not being if I did, I wouldn't tell you. You're not being very polite. I haven't finished talking. I have. I want to talk to you. I need your help. Sorry, I don't help gangsters. I'm a businessman. Yeah, sure you are. And your brother was only a paid employee, a right. gangster. Just keep your voice down, huh? Now, let's forget about Johnny. Aren't you worried about your sister? Yeah. I tried to keep her from marrying a cheap crook. Maybe he's not the kind of a boy you'd choose for your sister, but she chose him. They're young and in love, and they'll work things out. Now, where are they? Where are they? Alex. I know you want to protect your sister, and I want to protect my brother. But if I don't find them, they're head of the trouble. He could be killed. Do you want that on your conscience? Maybe he'd be better off dead. Me, Eddie. Eddie! Eddie! Oh, Eddie! Oh, you make me feel so happy when you come to see me. Yeah, it's good to see you. Oh. How are you? Okay. <laughs> Why you are in New York? Business or pleasure? Both. <laughs> Alice, she's okay? Oh, she's fine, Mama, fine. Uh. How's Grandma? Uh, the same. Oh, but you make her so happy since you sent her the TV set. She never take her eyes off. <laughs> but she doesn't understand one word of English. <laughs> oh, Gino, caro nipotino mio, come mi fa piacere di vederti. Oh, no, Elena, va bene. Così, così. Non troppo bene, no, no, non troppo male, no, la vecchiaia. E, e tu come stai, caro? Molto bene, grazie. Caro. Mamma, Edoardo non credo che ha mangiato. Lascialo venire che gli preparo qualche cosa, eh? C certo, certo, io non mi intrattengo. Bu buon appetito, eh? Ciao, Eddie, ti vedo più tardi. Ciao, sì. Dolvino. Arrivederci. Poor grandma, she thought I was Gino. Uh, what do you expect? She's no baby no more. We grow old. Sure, we forget. Hey. You like it? Oh, sure. What do you think? I, I tell everybody, my son Eddie, he sent me the finest icebox in New York. Oh, Mama, when are you going to stop calling it an icebox? Why? She make ice, no? Mm. <laughs> and now I make you something to eat. Ah, but first, some vino. Why don't you let me send Grandma to that rest home in the country, huh? It'll do a lot of good. Oh, if she go away from Mulberry Street, she die. No, Eddie. I keep her here with me. What for I should send her away? In your letters, you seem to have a lot of worries on your mind. Oh, so I got worries. So I take care of them. You think maybe not? <laughs> Mama, how's Johnny? Why you ask? I just want to talk to him. 
He's in trouble? When did you see him last? Like I write in my letter, maybe three, four months ago. Well, how did he seem to you? Was he nervous or upset? Oh, he looked happy. Me, I, I was nervous, upset. Every day, somebody stand in front of the store. Strangers, men with eyes like marbles, they, they watch who come in, who go out. When was that? About two months ago. Why you ask? Oh, nothing. You worry too much, Mama. Forget it. How's Nora? Johnny's oh, wife. She's a happy too. Just like a Johnny. <laughs> that Nora. She's a nice. Maybe a little skinny, you know, like like a college girl. Only she never went to college, I don't think. Oh, but Johnny is so proud. But I never wrote to you that they got married. Oh uh, no, Cubic told me. Oh. So you're working for Sid again, eh? No, Mom, I'm not working for Sid. He's after Johnny. Nobody's after Johnny. We're just trying to find him so we can help him. Oh. You don't believe that, huh? You sure you would help Johnny? Sid Kubik? I don't know. Oh, Mama, how can you say that? Sid's your friend. Yeah, I always believed that, but when Gino came to say goodbye, he said, Mama, don't trust Kubik. You listen to a crazy kid like that? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I'm all mixed up, Eddie. I don't know. How, how can Kubik do something wrong against me? It don't make sense. He, he must always remember how I got in front of the bullet to save his life. Uh, he hasn't forgotten, Mama. Oh, my leg. She remember. Sid Kubik. He remembers too, I am sure. Mama, what about Johnny? I am sure, but, but still I am all mixed up. I haven't heard from Johnny in a long time. Well, then you did hear from him. When? Where was he? I don't know nothing, and I don't say nothing. Mama, if you know, you gotta tell me. They're worried about him. They got a right to be. That's why Kubik sent for me. To do what? To find Johnny and get him out of the country for a while. Why they wanna send Johnny out of the country? He don't make no trouble for nobody. Well, we know that, but the others, they don't. They got reasons to believe Johnny might go to the DA. And I've got to find him to put some sense into his head. Believe me, it'll be better. Oh, no, no. Oh, Virgine Santissima, che devo fare con questi ragazzi miei? Look, Eddie, I don't tell you nothing, and then they don't bother you no more. Look, Mama, it doesn't work that way. Well, all right. Tell them to come to me. I keep my mouth shut like this. They don't like it, so they kill me, okay? Maybe it's a punish from God because I... I hope to save Kubik's life. Mama, forget the past. It's now that counts. Johnny's in trouble, and I want to protect him. And if I don't find him, they will. Even Sid Kubik, no matter how much he loves the family, won't be able to stop them. If I don't find Johnny first, he'll be killed. No! No, no, David, no, no, don't, don't say, don't even well, say that's that. That's the way it is. Face the facts. That's why you've got to tell me. Oh, Eddie, Eddie, I'm your mama. Don't say words that cut my heart. Eddie, oh, I'm not going to tell. I'm oh. not. OK, you have Johnny's blood on your hands. Oh, no! And I say yes. If you keep quiet, Johnny will be killed. No, 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 no! Oh, Madonna mia! Madonna mia, che devo fare? Aiutatemi voi! Aiutatemi voi perché io perdo la testa! Oh, Virgine Santissima, perdo la testa! OK, Mama. I'll try to find them anyway. I hope to God I find them in time. I don't know no more what's right and what's wrong. The last time I heard from Johnny, he was in, in California. Camino. El Camino? Yeah. He was on a farm with some people whose name is Felici. But, but I don't know if he's still there. Felici, I'll remember the name. Yeah. Eddie, don't trust nobody. And, I won't. And take care of your brother. Well, you take care of yourself.
I haven't seen you around in a long time. Oh, hello, Vic. This is Eddie Rico, Johnny's brother. Hop in, Eddie. We'll give you a lift, huh? Uh, no, thanks, Vic. I'm just going down a few blocks. It's all right. Come on, we'll take you to walk. Come on. Uh, you'll drop me at the subway, huh? Hello. Hi there, handsome. That's Jean, a Miss America loser. This one's Nellie. Say something, honey. Hi. Hi. We're on our way to a new night spot. Why don't you join us? I've got to get up early. Just drop me over the next subway station, then. Jean's a real good sport. Right, sweetheart? <laughs> Why don't you let him find out for himself? You can do better, honey. I'm a married man. But they're the best kind. No. Maybe some other time, huh? <laughs> That's a definite date, doll. Heard anything from your brothers? No. No, not lately. I haven't seen him around. How's things in Florida? Oh, it's a great life. So I heard. But for strangers, not for me. Any place outside New York, it's like a regular porn country. Sure you won't change your mind about tonight, Eddie? We'll have a ball. Oh, sorry I couldn't make it, but thanks anyway. Goodbye, married man. Thanks for the lift, Vic. Anytime. Give my regards to your brothers when you see them, huh? Yeah. American Airlines, reservations, please. One moment, please. Reservation? Hello, I want a reservation to El Camino, California. For when? As soon as possible. Sorry, there's no direct flight to El Camino. Well, can you get me as far as Phoenix? Yes, sir. What name, please? Uh, my name? Uh, Rogers, E. Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. All right, thank you. Do you have space on flight 24 to El Camino? Yes, sir. One way or round trip. One way. We'll leave on time? You have about five minutes. Thank you. Here's a baggage check. I'll pick up the ticket in a minute. Hiya there, Eddie. You don't remember me, do you? Pete Seltzer. I used to see you around Chicago. Oh, sure. Sure, how are you? Sure been a long time, ain't it? I was the barkeeper at the Shoreline Tavern. Still drawing a blank? No, no, I remember you. Just a little different, that's all. Oh, this? The old lady keeps telling me it's all kind of silly. You know, wearing a gallon hat on a two-pint head. <laughs> but the customers expect it. Say, I got a nice joint about 10 miles from here. Roulette, blackjack, poker. Uh, everything all right? Uh, no trouble? Cops? Are you kidding? You know, it's a funny thing. Last night in the joint, uh, somebody got to talking about you and your brother. Oh? Uh, 
Which one? Well, the one, um, the youngest one. Uh, look, Eddie, if you're gonna stay in Phoenix for a while, why don't you stay with me? You'll like my joint. I'll give you all the action you want. <laughs> all right, then maybe next time, huh, Pete? Oh, sure. Sure, Eddie, it's good to see you. Maybe next time you come through, I, uh, we get together. Fine. Okay, Pete. Good to see you, Eddie. All right. Long distance, please. Long distance. Hello, I want to talk to Bayshore, Florida. I want to speak to Mrs. Edward Rico. The number is Bayshore 9876. This is Mr. Rico. Collect, please. Hold the line, please. That's right, I'll wait. I'm sorry, the line is busy. Shall I try it again in a few minutes? No. No, just cancel the call, thank you. Hotel in town? You like this place, senor, I guarantee it. And if you want some action, or uh, you want to go someplace, don't forget to call on Pedro, eh? Gracias. I have a room, please. Yes, sir. How long are you planning to stay? Uh, one or two nights, maybe. I'll get a bellboy for you, Mr. Rogers. Thank you. Three fourteen. Yes. Everything all right, sir? Fine. so frightened. Is he the man, Marty? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset her. I'm Eddie Rico. Come in. Nora? Nora? Johnny's brother, Eddie. How did you find us? So you're Johnny's wife. Mama spoke a lot about you. How is Johnny? He's fine. Just, just fine. Is he around? Well, I'll leave you two to talk. I'll finish up in the kitchen, Nora. What do you want with Johnny? Well, he's in trouble. Certain people. These certain people, they know where we are? No. But they sent you to find Johnny for them. Look, if your brother hadn't gone to the district attorney... I don't know what my brother did, and I don't care. Well, I do, since it concerns my brother. I've come here to help him. I don't think you can help, so why don't you just leave us alone? Look, we haven't got time to argue. 
You've got to listen to me. And Nora, is he the man I'm not supposed to talk to? Be careful, Mr. Johnny. Johnny. That's him. You know the man I mustn't talk to? Yeah, yeah, that's all right. You don't have to be afraid of him. Come, Mary. We thought somebody might come around asking questions, so we told the kid not to uh, say anything. That's all right. I understand. I never figured it to be you. John, I think it'd be better if we both had a uh, quiet talk. Just the two of us, huh? There's nothing she can't hear. All right. Come on, I'll get you some wine. You meet my wife? Yes. But I don't think she likes me. I see there's going to be another Rico soon. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. How about you and Alice? Well, we're thinking of adopting... Johnny, him. how can you sit there talking to him? Nora, he's my brother. Is he? Ask him why he's here. I guess he was sent. Who, Cubic? Yeah. That's what I was afraid of. Sounds serious. Oh, they're worried about you. Why, because they haven't heard from me? Look, Johnny, you've always listened to me before. What I tell you is for your own good, right? Drink your wine. You haven't answered me. Johnny, he's going to tell you some crazy story about my brother. Her brother went to the DA. Johnny. The boys feel he tried to make a deal with the DA. If he can get someone to turn state's evidence... Do you evidence... think I'd squeal? Of course not. No, then what are you doing here? Well, I'm your brother. I trust you. But the others, they don't. Don't listen to him, Johnny. So Cubic thinks I'm going to talk. No, he doesn't, Johnny. But the boys think your wife might make up your mind for you. You can understand why they don't feel safe. No, I don't understand. Do they think I'd squeal on my own brother, send Gino to the chair? Johnny, for God's sake, you gotta listen to me. He sent you to find me, though. That's right, to talk to you, to tell you to get out of the country for a while. I see. The only thing is, I don't see that as long as they were gonna send one of my brothers, why didn't they send Gino? But why Gino? Because now Gino's a killer. Look, Johnny, I came here for your own good. If you don't listen to me, it might cost you your life. Since when does Mr. Cubic care about anybody? Since now! He wants to help Johnny. Eddie, you're talking crazy. But Cubic's not an animal. He can never forget what Mama did for him. Now, don't be a dumb kid all your life. Why dumb? Because he's too smart to listen to you. Look, Johnny, be honest. Face the facts. You left the organization without so much as a word. So Cubic gets worried. Why not? That still doesn't mean he's against you. Oh, I bet he loves me like a son. He just wants you to get to a safe place, that's all. And you believe him? Absolutely. Well, then you're not the smart guy I thought you were. Oh, that wife of yours has scrambled your brains. You're the one that's not being smart. We know what we're doing. You know nothing. Now, look, kid, did I ever steer you wrong? No, but I got a feeling this time. I don't think Cupid wants me out of the country or safe like you say. He doesn't know where I am, and he's plenty worried. What must I do to make you understand? Beat it into your head? Why don't you just leave us alone? Laura, take it easy. Hey, look, we didn't make any deal with the DA or anybody else. I'll tell you why I ran out. Nora had something to do with it. Yeah, not that she ever asked me to or told me to. No, that is because she's clean and good. The first decent thing that ever happened to me. And when I found out we were going to have a kid, I wanted to make sure there'd be one Rico who could grow up free of all the things that you, Gino, or I ever grew up with. But no, everything's lost up now. He must have followed you here. Look, Johnny, it's only a few miles to the Mexican border. Nobody will ever know who you are but us. You're going to keep quiet and never say a word about me, huh? That's right. Tell me, even when they put the pressure on you good and hard, Eddie? I want to protect you. Look, Eddie, I wish I could feel about the organization the way you do, but you haven't been with them for a long time. Marco, this is my brother, Eddie. Well, when do you think the executioners will come? Johnny. Johnny. Nora. 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 Marco, call a doctor, Marco. Maggie, give me a hand. Hey, Nora. Hello, operator. Hello. Operator, give me 3640 and hurry, please. It's an emergency. Nora. Right. Wake up, Aunt Nora. Good morning. Nora. Oh, Nora. Don't, 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 don't get excited, will you? Wake up, Aunt Nora. Doctor? Doctor, this is Marco Felice. Oh, that's the first time I ever yeah. fainted. First time in my whole His life. His wife, Nora, just fainted. You feel all right now? That's right, she's in terrible pain. Is there anything we can give her? I see. Yes, sir. 
Do you think you can come right away? Please get rid of him. Please get rid of him, Johnny. Please get rid of him. Please get rid of him. I'm sorry, Johnny. I hope she didn't. How do you think you ought to go? Johnny, I gotta have an answer, kid. Are you leaving? I don't want you and Nora to get hurt. When I think my own brother. Johnny, you gotta get away. Please believe me. You gotta trust me. You'll be safe. Eddie, if Nora loses that baby. Johnny, I was only trying to do it. Okay, what... okay, so nobody's blaming you. Let's just say something happened way back, huh? So maybe I am gonna die. But Eddie, you got even bigger troubles. You're gonna live. Get out, will you? Johnny. Johnny, you're wrong. You're all wrong, John. Take it easy, son. I'm Mike LaMotta. I don't remember giving you the key to my room. What's a key? I own the hotel. You have a drink? Get out. I'm busy. I guess you didn't hear me right. I said I'm Mike LaMotta. I'm in charge out here. In charge of what? Everything. Including your brother Johnny. What do you know about my brother Johnny? Number one, where he is. And? That's enough for now. Sure you won't have a drink? So you're in charge around here, huh? We'll see about that. You're wasting your time, son. Operator? Order, please. Give me long distance. I'm sorry, sir. You're sorry? What do you mean, you're sorry? I said, give me long distance. Sorry, no call can go out from this room. It's Lamarta. Give the man what he wants. Long distance, I'm on Miami, Florida. Mr. Sid Kubik at the Excelsior Hotel. What is your number, please? My number is Central 1553. I'm in room uh, 314. I right, call me back. You better get something through your skull. Nothing happens to Johnny, you understand? Nothing. A Kubik will have your head on a platter. Did you hear what I said? You got the floor. Say your piece. All right, then. And you listen, and listen real good. I came down here to find Johnny, to get him out of the country, on Cubic's orders. Cubic gives lots of orders. He tells you what to do, you do it. Tells me, I do it. Cubic gave you no orders about me and my brother. I'll kill you for saying that. No, you won't. Eddie, this is pointed at the wrong Rico. I'm only interested in Johnny. So how about a little cooperation? Even if you could take this away from me, you'd never get out of the hotel. You don't think I came here alone, do you, Eddie? I put him on. Huh? What? Well, he... He's got to be there. Checked out, right? Checked out. Uh. Told you it wouldn't do you any good. Eddie, I talked to Cubic ten minutes after you hit the Felici place. You know how it is in the rackets. My mother, my brothers. They tried to tell me, but I wouldn't listen. He never meant Johnny to get away at all. It was a setup to put a leash around my neck. To use me like a bloodhound to track down my brother. A dirty, sneaking animal! My dear Uncle Sid! Makes you feel any better to scream your head off? Go ahead. 
but it changes nothing. Come in. Gonzalez, this is Eddie Rico. Gonzalez. He's something like my secretary. What's going on down there? Well, they all stayed in the house until about a half an hour ago. And then the doctor came. And Felici took the little girl over to the uh, keeper's place, you know, up at the other end of town. Okay, what about Smith? Did he get here? Is he sober? Yeah. He's sober. You got Paco with him? No, there's a new guy. I don't know him. What time do you want him? What time do they go to bed in that neighborhood? Early. I get up at 6. <laughs> well, let's say 10.30 then. Anything like that. Just how can he do a thing like that? What's he talking about? Nothing. Forget about it. <clears throat> Anything else for me? No, no, that's all. Have him use two cars. I'll let you know if there's any change. Okay. I'll see you later. Yeah. You sit there and talk about Johnny like... like you're getting rid of some garbage. This is a human being. And one that could cook us all, you included. He's my kid brother. So he's your brother. We're all brothers, aren't we? Did that ever stop anything? You know that. I was never in on that end. Don't give me that. You knew it was going on, so don't start playing holy with me now. Look, Mike, I don't know you. I never saw you before today. I want you to do me a favor. Give my kid brother a break. That's the way you should have talked in the beginning. Not that it's done any good. Look, his wife's gonna have a baby. Yeah, I know. His friend Felicia's been burning up the phone. First he calls She might even lose the then baby. Then he calls Sheriff Hooley. Eddie, I appointed Sheriff Hooley. And if he carried out my instructions, and I'm sure that he did, he's in bed right now with a temperature of 103. He'll be better tomorrow. Mike, look, I got about $100,000. And a business that's worth more than that. They're yours. It's yours. If you just let Johnny get away. Eddie, you don't even tempt me. What good is money or a business to a dead man? And that's exactly what I'd be if I crossed Cubic. Stop tearing yourself apart, boy. Figure like it's 1030. Figure like you've already lost him. I'm gonna call down for something to eat. You want anything? Something to eat? You just sentenced the man to die. How can you think about eating? You think it's crude that I should eat at a time like this? Wake up, Eddie. Johnny's already spoken for. He doesn't count anymore. But you, you're alive. Did you hear that? You're alive. You listening to me or am I just talking to myself? A room service. That cubic made promises, and I believed them. You're like a guy in the death house arguing with a warden. I can't help you. And you can't help Johnny. Get it through your head. I came here because I wanted to help him. He was past helping a long time ago, even before you left Miami. Uh, that Cubic knew all about it. He's only protecting us against a kid that's blown his cork. Yeah, he's a great protector. If his mother did something he didn't like, he'd protect her, too. Make it easy, son. This ain't no sewing circle you got into when you were a kid. You knew the score, even then. It's 24 past. Okay, Gonzalez. Is everything all right? Yeah, everything's all right. Call the Felici house. Eddie, you better have a drink. The kind of 374? I don't want a drink. Take the phone, Eddie. Come on. There's nothing you can do now but go along or take the fall with him. Tell Johnny, go out the road and meet the boys. Alone, unarmed. He'll see the parked cars. Suppose he won't come. He loves his wife. He'll understand. Hello? 
Johnny? Hi. Is Nora all right? Eddie, I've been trying to reach you. I'm a father. I'm a father. Isn't that great? Oh, Nora and the baby are fine. And my don't want a kid. Oh, God, I'm so excited. I can hardly talk. But look, I got to tell you this. He's a boy, and we're going to name him after Papa, Antonio Rico. How do you like that, huh? Antonio Rico. So congratulate me, will you? I'll congratulate you. You're an uncle. Oh, I don't get you. Johnny. See Mama's face when I tell her we had a baby. John. What's the matter? You were right about Cubic. God forgive me, but you were right. Listen, Johnny. Johnny. They're... They're waiting for you. Where? Outside the house. In a parked car. And I suppose if I don't go, something's gonna happen to know and the baby, huh? Eddie. John. Go, go, Johnny. Call the cops. Get the next... Oh, Johnny, this is a friend of yours. Now, here's some good advice. Don't go off the deep end like your brother. If you want your wife and kid to stay in one piece, you go out and meet the boys on the road. Alone. No gun. No other funny business. Did you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. You got five minutes, then the boys are coming in after you. Yeah, I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. Once him brought back, you take him. It's your prize package. How you feel? <laughs> okay. Okay, don't talk, but whatever you're thinking, forget it. It was pretty rough back there in El Camino, but you got to play the game according to the rules, not like your brother Gino. What about Gino? Well, didn't you know? He tried to get out of the country against orders. So what happened? Now, you can't buck the system, Eddie. It's real tough. Tough. Two of the Rico brothers gone. Now, you'll be the smart one. Two down. Don't make it one to go. Fasten your seatbelt, please. We'll be arriving in Phoenix in five minutes. Fasten your seatbelt, please.
Listen, pal. Now, let's get this straight. I got nothing personal against you. I just got my orders to get you back. So if you got any other ideas in that head of yours, forget about it. They'll only find you anyway. <laughs> Even if there ain't another Rico to send after you. I'm in trouble. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. I'll tell you when I see you. Look, honey, don't talk now. Just listen. The minute I hang up, I want you to leave the house. Make it look as if you were just going to the market. You understand? Take nothing with you except whatever money you've got. And your passport. Where will I meet you? Oh, I'm coming to that. Now, you remember the place where those two people spent the honeymoon? Remember the champagne cork through the window? Yes. All right. Right. I'll see you there. Now, use your sister's name. W when will you be there? I don't know, a couple of days, maybe sooner. Look, but don't go out of your room until I get there, you understand? I'm looking all over for you. If you still want that ride with me, buddy, I'm ready. Be right with him. Look, Alice, I gotta go now. Now, take care of yourself. You got everything straight? Yes, I'll leave for New York right away. Good girl. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, thank you. Yes, Mike. It's me. What is it? Lamara, I gave you a simple job to do. You fumbled it. Mitty Rico's broken loose. All right. He's in your hands. Send out the word. Wherever he is, I want Rico delivered to me. And Phil, make sure you do a better job than Lamara. Real sure. Excuses. Cover the whole town. And no mistakes. Still no word about his wife? Nothing. Except she must have left Miami three days ago. Ancient history. Did you get the boys in Georgia, Virginia, D.C.? Got them all except Lefty Taylor. I'll get him, too. I got the ports of entry covered. I get Harrison. Tell him to contact the boys. And you'll be alive. Those were the last words Johnny ever said to me. I tried, sweetheart, but, but it was too late. It was always too late. From the first day you and Cubic... Darling, I'm not blaming you. 
You had no choice. Oh, well, I did have a choice. 20 years ago, when Kubrick offered me that job, I should have thrown it in his face. He showed me a plush line rat hole, and I crawled in and made it my home. But you had nothing to do with all that, that, that filth and, and, and corruption and killing. You didn't. You were just their accountant. Well, that's what I kept telling myself. But I had their stamp on me. I put it there myself. Property of the organization. Eddie, please. Well, let me say it, darling. I better get out of my system before it chokes me. Everything I've touched, what happened to my brothers, to you, the baby, it's my fault. Enough, Eddie. Yes, it's enough. I agree. I'm going to quit. Oh, no. If you think that you... Honey, you, you can't fight them. Johnny and Gino tried. Look at them. I am looking at them. That's why I have to do it this way. Eddie, they'll kill you. Oh, honey, look, we don't have to stay here. We can run away. No, darling. No, darling, we're not going to run. I know enough to stop them cold, the whole organization from cubic down. And you're going to help me. How? Oh. Well, you got your passport. I want you to leave the country. Alone? Just for a little while. Why can't we go together? It's too dangerous. They expect that. They'd spot us even before we got out of town. Eddie, Eddie, please. Oh, please don't send me away. Look, darling, you'll take the plane to Mexico and I'll follow you soon after. What soon after? Well, I've done what I have to. Now, don't worry, we'll make it. Eddie? Is that what you believe? Or what you hope? Can't you understand? There's no me anymore. There's just us. Look, darling, we'll be together for the rest of our lives. You'll see. I'll walk into your room just like I walked in tonight. Oh, Eddie, please don't let me leave you. I'm so afraid. Oh, darling. Look, peasant. In a little while, it'll be us again. Now, trust me this time, huh? Please. Please. All right. Okay, darling. Okay, baby. I'll be back in a little while. Eddie. Eddie. Don't worry about it. And don't answer the phone to no one. I'll be back in a little while. Johnny anymore. He's dead. I know that. Get out before I call the police. You're not killing anybody. You're going to help me. I said you're going to help me. You're going to help your sister's kid. Like you helped to kill his father? Okay, you got a right to say that. But don't forget, you helped too. Look, Malix, I want to go to the DA. Yeah, because they killed your brother. Because they killed both my brothers. I want to go and tell them everything. Look. If I really believe that you wanted to put an end to all of this... You can believe it, Malix. You can believe it. I got money in the bank. Clean money for my business in Florida. Enough for Johnny's kid and my mother. Enough to get my wife out of the country and to help take care of her. Before I do anything else, I gotta make sure she's in the clear. Well, what, what do you want me to do? Well, I want you to meet us at the bank tomorrow. At the Gotham National Bank at five minutes after ten. And see that she gets away on a plane. After that, you can set up a date with the DA for me. I can call him right now. Oh, well, there's a pipeline out of his office right into Cubic's ear. You gotta find some other way of getting to him. Set up a date someplace where a 45 won't interrupt the conversation. You mean they walk right into the DA's office? Or... Sure, they've done it before. Cubic knew all about your visits to the DA. Look, Malix, they've got a guy downstairs waiting and watching every move you make. I want you to be careful, because you might get into a lot of trouble. And I'm warning you. Okay, I've been warned.
long time since you've been here. Yes. just came into the bank. See you soon. Have a nice trip. But, Eddie, I, I'm You know so... the name of the hotel? Yes, Pastor. Darling, you talk too much. Now, I'll see you day after tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Right? That's for Nora and the baby. Malice, I'll meet you at Vasoli's tonight in the village. I'll be waiting in the kitchen. Goodbye, darling. <laughs> Idlewild Airport, driver. best I could, Mama. Oh, it's not your fault. Me, me, I'm to blame. It's my fault. Only mine. Mama, yes. I haven't got much time. My boys are dead. What's there to live for? Mama. <laughs> Mama, there's a lot to live for. There's another Rico, a new Antonio Rico, who'll live without fear like a decent human being. You'll see, Mama, there's a new life ahead for all of us. And for Johnny's kid. Figlia mia, figlia, scusa, cara. Posso avere un bicchiere d'acqua? I'll take care of her. Huh? 
Hello, Eddie. Take it easy. You dirty, rotten, stinking animal! I've got things to say, but not here. Oh, yeah. 